What's going on, everybody? You're here with another episode of Big Talk with Lizzie with your host, Lizzie the Gifted. Yo, episode number 36? Damn, I'm losing track. Episode 36. That's kind of lit, actually. 36 episodes, 36 weeks in a row. I'm super hyped about that, man. And this is the second time that I'm trying this out where I have a video and I'm going to strip the audio and use that to double as the podcast and have a YouTube video. You know, I'm just trying to work more efficiently. So if you're watching this on YouTube, huge favor, click below, subscribe to the podcast. If you're listening to the podcast, click in the description, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It would mean a lot to me. I'd like to grow the community. All right. So this episode, you know, I'm really happy I'm doing this episode with this topic because this episode is the opposite of last week's. Last week's topic, I talked all about working alone and how important it is to work alone and how, you know, you got to be able to be in solitude and work by yourself. Well, you know, again, just to clarify, by the way, when I said that, I don't want people to think, oh, he has nobody in his corner. He's not, he doesn't have anybody there. Like nobody works with him. Like he's all, no, that's not what I meant. That's not what I want for you. I don't mean for you to just go work alone and isolate everyone else. No. All I meant was I was trying to stress how important it is to at certain times find yourself in a place of solitude so you can get the most work done and be the most productive, right? Now, this week I'm going to talk about the exact opposite. I'm going to talk about how important it is to have people around you to up your game and to make you a better person and to make you more productive. I'm going to start with a quote. Now, I'm looking over here at my computer. I got some notes. Uh, Now, I'm reading a book called You Are a Badass at Making Money by Jen Sincero. And I freaking love this book. And I wanted to share a couple excerpts. That's where I got the idea for this episode, by the way. So the first one, surround yourself with people who have unwavering faith in themselves, in you, and in our abundant universe. One more time. Surround yourself with people who have unwavering faith in themselves, in you, and in our abundant universe. Now, let's start. We're going to break that quote down one by one. Who have unwavering faith in themselves. Very key. It's very hard to have faith in someone else when you don't have faith in yourself. When you're thinking about people around you and you're thinking about what types of people you want to have around you, you obviously want people who have faith in you, but they're not going to have faith in you if you don't have if they don't have faith in themselves first. Very important. Number 2, faith in you, right? A lot of people are very confident in themselves and they might not be confident in you. Is that what you want? You want those types of people in your life? Do you really want people who aren't 100% supportive, 100% down? You know, I've been extremely thankful and extremely blessed to have a lot of people in my life who are who have a lot of faith in me. My parents, my girlfriend, my friends, uh, lots of people have faith in me. Not, I mean, more than enough people. I don't want to sound like bragging. Like I'm not trying to brag. I just mean that a lot of people have faith. A lot of people have a lot of strong faith in me, and that means a lot to me. It means so much to me. And honestly. I wouldn't have been able to accomplish what I've been accomplishing without those people, right? And again, I'm not even close to the place I want to be when I say accomplish what I want to accomplish. I'm not even close to getting what I really want out of life and out of my career, right? I'm still trying to grind every single day, but I wouldn't have gotten this far. I've been doing this music thing for like eight years. And my homie Gabe, for I'm going to give a lot of shout outs in this one, by the way. My homie Gabe... We've been friends for like 10 or 11 years. He was friends with me before I was taking music seriously. And since then, he's obviously been hella supportive. I'm hella supportive of him. We support each other. Faith, 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 faith. Super, super good relationship, right? Um, You know, it's very important that you have people around you like that. Again, I'll give you another example. My parents, right? My parents are cool with, with whatever I'm doing. A lot of parents are super, they put a lot of pressure and I'm not going to talk about people's parenting styles, but a lot of parents put pressure on their kids. You got to go through this route, right? After college, you have to get a job that's paying you a certain amount of money. Like you got to get out of the house. And like I said, parents parent a lot differently and I'm not here to judge and I'm not here to criticize. All I'm saying is 
I'm grateful for what my parents are doing. They're totally cool with me making these videos, podcasts, songs, producing music. And at this moment in time, not making that much money, right? But they have faith that I'm going to find my path and that I'm going to end up doing exactly what I set out to do. Super thankful. If my parents didn't have faith in me, oh my gosh, it'd be a lot harder. I wouldn't quit, but it'd be really, really, really hard to do what I'm actually doing, right? Um, another big shout out, right? My girlfriend, Laura, she's super supportive of what I'm doing. A lot of, you know, partners, spouses, whatever are really, you know, oh, like when are you going to get serious? Or they might be like, you know, they, they see my girlfriend very, she's very simple. She's complicated in some ways. In a lot of ways, she's very simple, right? She just wants experiences. She wants to have fun. She wants to be happy in the present moment. A lot of girls and guys, but a lot of people are like, I need you to take me on. We need you to go on this really expensive trip. I want this. They're, they have expensive taste. I want this handbag. We should go to this fancy place. Like, you're graduated. Like, you should move out. Like, we want to have our own sp space. All that stuff. My girlfriend's cool with everything that's going on. She believes in what I'm doing. She has faith, obviously, in herself and faith in me. And our bond is stronger because of the faith that we have in each other. So it makes things a lot better. And it's way easier for me to grind on what I want to grind on. Because I'm thinking in the back. I'm not thinking in the back of my head. She's like, my girlfriend always nagging me. My girlfriend doesn't want me doing this. Like, she doesn't, like, I'm not, I, I, those thoughts never crossed my mind. All I'm thinking is I know Laura is down for me. I know she wants the best for me. And I know that, you know, I'm going to end up making it for her and, of course, for everybody else. But she's a huge reason. Faith. That faith gives me confidence. Her faith in me, my parents, um, of course, Gabe. Like, Gabe has been friends with me for a long time. We work on music. Melvin. My brother Melvin, who I actually had on this pod. I've actually had Gabe on the podcast too. He was on the third episode, I believe, um, and with Jason. And Melvin was on the podcast not too long ago. Um, my roommates from Chico. Um, just I can literally name off. I, could, I, I got another one. So I have another thing I want to say. You got to have people around you who are going to challenge you. This is big time. And I'll name off a couple, right? Um, when I first started in music, obviously I wasn't good. Like... That's just how it is. When you start making, doing something, you're not going to be good at it the first day, the first year. It's going to take a while, right? And I had some friends who were telling me, oh, yeah, this is good. Like, this is solid, man. Like, cool, you're getting better. Like, this is dope. Because they cared about me and they didn't want to hurt my feelings. But I had certain friends, Evan, Evan Maeda and Abe, Abe Zilkic, who were like, bro, this sucks. Like, they were straight up honest with me. And it didn't hurt my feelings. I mean... At the time, it was like, oh, like that stings like hella hard. But I was, I got over it quick because I knew it was good for me, right? And they started helping me really get better just because they, oh, man, this isn't good. But they would, they would explain. They'd be like, look, you're, it's not good because you're putting too many words into your flow. The beats aren't good. It doesn't sound professional. Like you need original beats. Like it's not catchy, like stuff like that. My boy Abe, he would literally listen to seven seconds of a song go, ah, I don't like it. And, me and my other homies would be like, dude, seven seconds, like, give it, no, like, that's not how people listen to music. He's like, I don't listen to music that way. He's like, if I don't like the first six, seven seconds, I don't want to listen to it. I have other songs to listen to. And he's being straight up. And so I was like, okay, like, that's cool. Like, I need to make this shit catchy. Like, I need to get going quick with my songs. Like, that helps. My boy Evan was the first person to tell me, dude, you're packing too many words into your flow. You don't sound like you're on pace. You don't have a good flow. You don't sound good. You don't sound smooth. He was the first person to tell me that. I worked at that for like a year, and it took me a long ass time. My boy Abe, again, he was like, bro, your songs aren't catchy. You need to like make catchier songs. They're not catchy. You're just rapping. Your rapping is good, but there's no catchiness. I've been, I worked so hard at trying to make songs that are catchy. Because of those two people and those, comp, and those crit, uh, uh, critiques, my music is what it is now. And I'm not saying I have the best music in the world, but it is a lot better than what it was when they first heard it. Now, I remember the first time I showed Evan some songs when I was in Chico. So, 2016, maybe, or 2015. I was like, what do you think of these? What do you think of this new song? He's like, I have nothing else to say. I have no more critiques. Like, you're, it's not about your music anymore. You know? It's not about your music. He's like, you ha you, you've already done it. Like, you did it. Like, you've gotten to the point where you're making good music. And I knew he was real because for years he was tearing me down. And he was being honest and overly critical. So I knew that when he was like, dude, I got nothing else for you. Like, you did it. Like, you're making catchy music. Now it's time to be consistent and get the marketing part. 
And I was like, oh my God, like that's crazy. Like that really gave me the push. In fact, it really brings me back to the story. Evan, Evan Maeda, who again, founder gifted by, I got so much to credit to Evan, but Evan, uh, you know, and I don't want to get too off on these stories. I want to just really stick with the, like, I'm, I'm really just crediting people. So Evan, freaking the first, okay, so he asked me to burn a CD for him when we were seniors. He's like, hey, man, like, I have a CD player in my car. I need some music. Like, can you, like, burn me some cool songs? He didn't know I rapped. I didn't even know. Nobody really knew I rapped. So I was like, all right, I'm going to slip this one song in there called My Motivation, by the way, which I, nobody's going to be able to find. I'll, I'll figure out a way to re-release it, but you won't find it. Maybe you will. Anyway, so I slipped that one in there. I think it was like track seven. He's listening to it. I'm listening to it with him. And he's like, is this you? Because <laughs> it wasn't like professional quality and he could tell my voice. I was like, yeah, man, this is me. Like, what do you think of it? Like, I don't even care if you don't like it. Like, just tell me what you think. And he's like, bro, this is pretty good. He's like, this is solid. Like, are you like serious about music? I'm like, absolutely. I'm like, I really want to do music. Like, I just don't feel like I have like the confidence and the faith. He's like, you should put a mixtape together. And that was the first time anyone told me to put together a con like an album. And he's like, you should go for this. Like, make a mixtape and go for it. I never look back. <laughs> Since that day, I never look back. And shout out to my boy who told me to do that. Right? You got to keep those kinds of people around you. That's the point of the story. Again, by, by the way, Gifted by Choice, which everyone thinks is my brand. Right now, I've got some kind of creative influence and I have creative control over it. And I release like clothing with it and my name's Lazy the Gifted. So everyone just thinks it's mine and I'm the CEO founder. I'm not the CEO founder, right? I have creative control over it right now, but my boy Evan, he's the founder of Gifted by Choice. He is the one. So just so y'all know, I wanna give credit where credit is due. And he's like allowing me to use the name Gifted by Choice and use it for how I wanna use it. So anyway, so much going on, right? So so, so many stories are flashing through my head. Um, it's amazing. So. I'm trying to think about no, if I can think of other people, man. It's just the point of what I'm trying to say is you got to keep people. Oh, 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 here it is. This is the other one I wanted to say. So for the past couple days, I mean, not even a couple days, like four or five days or something. I don't know. I took a break, but I've been waking up early, like 545, 550 a.m., like something like that. Uh, getting up out of bed, getting going, starting my workout before 7 a.m. So like between 630 and 7, I start working out. Uh, and here's how I've been able to do it. Me and my friend Jarrell Hanley, who you guys can look up, J Marquise 90, ooh, I don't know his Instagram off top. I think it's J Marquise 93 or 94, something like that. He's a hooper out in Beaverton, Oregon. He and I like have this thing, we compete against each other where when we wake up, we FaceTime. And so whoever FaceTimes first wins. So at Virgin, we said six. And the first day, I FaceTimed him at 558. And I beat him. The next day, he hit me at 550. I set my alarm for 555. He set it for 550. He beat me. I think the day after that, I don't remember who won, but the point is, we've been doing that. We don't just face him. All right, bro. Good to talk to you. Hang up. My whole morning routine is him. Me and him talking about life, about things we want to do, about big talk, and it gets my mind going, gets me started. While we're talking, I'm making my breakfast. I'm, I'm drinking water. I'm making a cup of tea. I'm getting going. I'm getting dressed. Like I'm getting ready. I even go and he's with me. I put I put a little mount on my car so I'm not holding the phone while I'm driving, but I put a mount on my car. I drive, don't look at him, look at the road. And we talk and then I get to the gym all the way up until I go into my locker. I'm like, all right, bro, I'm at my locker, I gotta go. He's at the gym, he's gotta go. Today we talk for an hour, an hour. And he's the reason that I wake up. Like my alarm today went off at 5.50 and I was like, hell no, I don't wanna get out of bed. That was like for less than a second. I thought that, and then I thought, well, I, I, I'm not, I'm not gonna let, I'm not gonna let Jarrell down. So I, I, boom, 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 Facetimed him quick. His actually, his name was already up on my phone. So when I opened my phone, his name was right there, ready. I remember I did that. So boom, I hit him. So anyway, the like Jarrell is the re, like he's waking me up early. He's the reason I wake up early, right? Um, Connor Jean, my boy. I think we did episode number twenty. I don't remember. I want to say episode number 24. It's called Mastermind Talk with Connor Jean. He's on my podcast. Me and my homie Connor, we talk all the time on the phone, just big talk stuff, relating to each other. Like, it's all about that, right? It's all about keeping together people who are high frequency. And I think what the concept of high frequency is high frequency means like people whose energy is high. When you think about this, 
When you're around people and they have high energy and you love being around them, you talk to them, you feel like you just got inspired, you feel like you just got fired up, you feel like on top of the world, right? That's the type of people you gotta keep around. And what's really sad and what's really, really rough for a lot of us, clearly not for me, I have great people around me, but for some, like hopefully this isn't you, but you might, have, like, I, I remember I worked with a dude years ago whose parents didn't support him doing music. And I gave him a place. I said, you should come through to my house. Bring all your equipment. Bring your computer. Work over at my house. My parents are cool with this. They love that we do music. And, we, and I provided a home for him. And we did music together. And his parents didn't support it, you know? And I know we've been around people like that, right? I have another homie, right? He told me, we, we FaceTimed. He's like, bro, like, I love doing music, but my family just doesn't see it. They think it's silly. They think it's dumb. They don't support it. And I feel for him. So for me, I'm trying to be there for him and show him, hey, like, I'm going to be here for you. I'm going to work on music with you. Like, I'm going to help you as much as I possibly can. Because I want to be that person for other people as well. So if you're listening to the podcast right now, if you're watching this video right now, two things you got to do. One, you, before you start looking, if you, if you already have people like this in your life, you're blessed. If you're already this type of person, you're blessed. But here's what you need to do. Number one, be that person first. Be that high frequency person. Be the person who goes out of their way to inspire people and motivate people and rally people together behind your message. Make people have faith in themselves. Give them that. Everybody needs that boost. Even me. I'm super char Look, honestly, I'm hella charismatic. I'm a type A personality. I'm an extrovert. Everyone who meets me thinks I'm hella confident all the time. Lee, he can't. Like, I've admitted to a lot of my friends, look, sometimes I don't want to do music. Sometimes I want to quit. I'm not even going to lie. Like, it's so hard to do it. And sometimes I just want to quit and do something else. But I never do. Obviously, I keep going. But I tell people that and they think it's so weird. They're so surprised by the fact that that's me. But it is what it is. I'm honest. But even, even though I have... Dude, I totally lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah, yeah, Even if those things come up in your life, still... Oh, 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 I know what I was trying to say. Even me. Even people who are super hyped up and energetic like I am. Even I need that boost. Even I need high frequency people to up my frequency. You feel what I'm saying? And so be that person first. First and foremost, be that person. Second, go find people who have high frequency. If you got people in your life right now who are low frequency and they make you feel stupid for what you're doing, it's because they feel dumb about what they're doing because they don't want to do what, they want, what they're doing. Trust. Because people who love what they do, like me, are going to make other people fall in love with what they do. I guarantee it, because that's just it. And all the people around who've doubted me and talked shit about me and made me feel like I shouldn't be doing it, they don't feel good about what they're doing. I guarantee it. So that's why I don't trip off it. It's just energy. The last thing I'm gonna say here, I really wanted to read this quote. I wanted to slip it in nicely, but I didn't, so I'm gonna read it now. All right. One of the benefits of having high frequency people is they up your game. Check this out. So this comes, this direct quote from Jen Sincero's book, You Are a Badass at Making Money. Guarantee if you read that book, you'll like it if you're on the pursuit to make some money. If you're not on the pursuit to make money, honestly, I don't know why you wouldn't be on the pursuit to make money. You don't have to be a greedy, we won't get into it. That's a topic for another time, but check the book out, okay? She's got another book called You Are a Badass, which is also, I've heard, a dope book. Haven't read it yet though, okay? Anyway, if you're around people who are making money, in great and joyful ways, you'll not only see what's possible for you, but you'll be motivated to push yourself. If you're around people who are ripping bong loads on the couch all day, you'll feel like a hero for getting your laundry done, okay? That basically means if you're around people who aren't getting anything done, you're gonna feel accomplished for just doing stuff that's not even that big of a deal. This is the last part. Healthy competition is a wonderful thing. Surround yourself with people who are bringing their A game and you will want to bring your A game too. So, you know, the point is get around people who are accomplishing way more than you. I'll give and a great example would be my 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 man, my man, my main man, my boss slash coach, Frank Alaco Jr. Frankie is older than me and he he's he owns his own business, ASA Prime. I've been blessed to work for ASA and Prime, Advanced Skills Academy. Um, and Frankie kill, we kill it with prime. We kill it with ASA. He's killing it with it. We're expanding. We got high school teams. We're going out to San Ramon. Like we're everywhere and it's amazing. And 
for me to watch Frankie, like I remember when I was a kid, all he had was ASA and Green Line. Now he's got this ginormous program. I work for it and it's crazy for me to like see that growth and be so close. Like I can ask him for advice whenever I need anything. And whenever I need advice, whenever I need to pick me up, I can ask him and he's gonna give it to me. And the point is, he, he's a mo he's way above what I'm doing right now. Like he's so like, like he's accomplished so much and he still is. Um, plus he's got three kids, he's got a wife, he's got a family and he's still doing all this stuff. It's amazing, he's way ahead. Connor Jean, he's out there really making money with basketball, which is something he loves doing. Like he's making money, training and doing what he loves. He's ahead of me. I just so recently have gotten in contact with Gabe Schillinger, who's the CEO of The Legion. The Legion is a music production business. They're doing something that I wanna be doing. My boy Gabe, not the same Gabe from my homie Gabe, but Gabe Schillinger. Dude, that dude is on a freaking another level. He's doing exactly what I want to be doing at a really, really, really high level. And when I talk to him, by the way, I've had one, I've had two phone calls with him. The second phone call was super long. It was like an hour and a half or something. He is the most humble person I've ever. Super chill, a little bit introvert, but still cool to talk to. Really, really humble. And that dude is six figure earner, like making a lot of money doing exactly what he wants to be doing. And, and it's great to talk to him because he's just super upbeat, super positive, cool guy. So the point of what I'm trying to say is get with high frequency people and get with people who are way past what you want to be doing because it's going to push you to try and reach their level and then you're going to push them to reach their full potential as well. Thank you so much for either watching this video or for listening to the podcast. Again, I really appreciate all the support that I've gotten on the podcast. It means a lot to me. Thank you all so 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 very much it really means a lot again do me a favor if you're watching this video on youtube click below subscribe to the podcast if you're listening to the podcast click below subscribe to the youtube channel and i will see you next week for another episode of big talk with Lizzie. thank you all so much i'll see you next week peace